thank you all for coming. Um, I uh, appreciate you guys attending every month and hope to see you in future months. So just a reminder, every first Thursday of the month at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be hosting our um, weekly or monthly webinars. And we have the next six months planned out where um, March we'll have Dr. Joseph Pepervich and in April we'll have Dr. Bruce Dunn. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and let Dr. Wong take over. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, so I, uh, you have to allow me to share the screen. I apologize about that. I will let you do that right now. Here you are. Yes. Okay, I think, I hope you can see my screen. Can you see my screen right now? Yep, it looks good. Okay, okay. So first of all, I really appreciate uh, Professor Matsum invited me also, the, the student chapter gave me an opportunity and I really like communicating with the student and inspired by their idea and also the, the, the some new some uh, suggestion and uh, some practical questions. So this is really my honor. Today I will talk about the electrolytic design for high capacity lithium metal or and lithium alloy anode. And first I talk about the general principle. I'm thinking and uh, also the main activity in my group. So for the electro, recently we focus on the electrolytic uh, the design, and here this is the potential refer to the lithium, and we know that the, the battery aqueous battery is a long history, and but they have a problem with the stability window. Even we use the lead, lead acid battery, it's still only two volt. The reason is why they cannot extend it because when your potential decrease and water decompose from uh, hydrogen gas. And then you do not have uh, any opportunity to further extend it until all the water de decompose. So if we really want to increase energy density, we have to get some uh, solvent that when they diffuse, the decompose, they are not form gas and all form less gas, but they form solid, they can pass away. Then another revolution is they use organic solvent. And organic solvent, because when the salt, lithium and salt dissolve into the organic solvent, when lithium move to the anode side, solvent has opportunity to reduce. Fortunately, they form passivation layer. And the passivation layer and um, block the reaction. Then they extend the window. Not only the organic themselves has high wide electrochemical stability window, additional benefit come from SEA. So this SEA actually composed, we call it organic and inorganic. Organic mainly come from solvent. Inorganic majorly come from the ion. So this is composed SEA is really good for graphite because they are flexible, bonded with graphite, and graphite volume change only 12%. This mechanical property is strong enough to tolerate 12% volume change. Efficiency can reach 99.98. So we can ensure 1,000 cycles. But if we use a lithium metal, use the same electrolytes, and then we find out the efficiency only 95. Why they are lower? Graphite is really good. Why they are the efficiency for lithium? is worse. We believe the reason is this SCA also strongly bonded lithium because they have a polymer. When they bond the lithium, lithium volume change, not 12%, it's infinity. When volume change a lot, the SCA strongly bonded with the lithium metal, the SCA also has similar volume change because they bond so strong. And no any material can withstand a huge volume change, they will crack. When they crack, uh, self-heating, and then they have a lower efficiency. 
But how can we solve this problem? And we need to reconsider the electrolytic design ICI. So our group, I think five years ago, we think we need to reverse it. So this is a car, but this is a little matter. We believe the ICI should be uh, less bound with little metal. Because if a less bound, even volume change, this not a change with the little metal. And the second, Lithium is a plating. Graphite is just an insertion. Plating, you need to make sure lithium is plating between the interface. So if it, the bonding very strong, they cannot diffuse because they have a break the bond. If they bond very weak, lithium easily diffuse. So we want to have a, the ICI has really high interface energy, less bonding. Another advantage is even you have a lithium penetrate inside because the surface interface energy is so high and the total energy penalty will increase. So less bound, high interface energy will bring real benefit, surprise lithium and drive. And also the SEA will not break. But uh, they have so many ceramic or polymer, which one has the highest energy density, energy, uh, interface energy with lithium. Generally, uh, polymer has a lower interface energy, ceramic has a high. In the ceramic, uh, major ceramic SEA, little fried has highest. This is a interface energy. And you see the sulfur is slower. So we need to build a little fried because they have a really high interface energy with a little. Also, we want this mechanical strong. So second term, it can mechanical property. And if you multiply this two value, lithium fluoride is the best. And lithium carbonate is, is fine, but a little so, uh, so far is not good. That's really solid state right now, they still have a challenge. Second, we want the efficiency high, meaning it's the thickness should be really, really thin. If thick, meaning it's you consume more lithium. And then this should be really, really electronic insulator. If it's insulated, they can build very thin because the limited thickness is tunnel effect. And then we check the, the band gap and little fluoride is really broad. So means their electronic conductivity is lowest. And we are not only consider the anode side, we have to consider cathode side. If you have a fluorine and form a little fluoride on the anode side, maybe you have, have an opportunity to form a little fluoride on the cathode side. How about cathode side? If we talk about little fluoride, the, the electrochemical stability window is six volt. Other material is lower. So meaning is if they form a, a little fluoride on the cathode side, because you put the fluorinated the solvent or salt in the electrolytics, they also benefit from the cathode is tiny at the window. Now we start to, if that's true, how can we form a little fluoride? So we know <clears throat> if we put the, the, the salt in the solvent, the one the solvation structure is SIP, we call it solvent, solvent, solvent separation ion pair. And if we, we want to form a little fluoride, the goal is we want ion reduce, solvent less reduce, because solvent reduce from polymer, ion reduce from a little fluoride. So there are two ways to do that. One is we increase the, the, the association between the lithium and the ion. In that case, when lithium move to the anode side, they bring more ion to the anode side. They have an opportunity to reduce. In this case, the lithium move if we only have SSIP, little more, they only bring the solvent, the less chance bring the ion. So we have to make the electrolytics designed as CIP, like contact ion pair, meaning one lithium they have pair uh, ion. Or maybe we can bring more, so we call it AGG. So we need to design this kind of structure rather than this. If we have this structure, we only get the organic, e organic. If we really want to form a little fluoride, 
we need to use PF6 hyperfluorine ion, also increase the concentration. How can we do that? First is increase the salt concentration. We increase salt concentration, and then we have a large opportunity to bring this CIP even AGG. So first the opportunity is to put a 10 molar lithium FSI in the carbonate. And we significantly increase the efficiency as we expect it. And, but this has a problem is that they are viscosity so high and they cannot penetrate to the high energy cell because they cannot penetrate in the pore, the hole. So another idea is how can we come still maintain the structure, but uh, reduce the viscosity. And then we think we do is we put an anti-solvent HFE. Anti-solvent is they dissolve the solvent, but then they're not a dissolved salt. So that meaning they, they bound it with the solvent, so they will, but they not dissolve the salt, so they disassociate this, the ion and the, 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 the solvent. In that case, they can bring more ion to the lithium. Second, the non dissolved salt, this viscosity is normally very, very low. So they can dilute the, the electrolysis and without affect the st local structure. So we got the same efficiency, but uh, the uh, viscosity really significantly reduced. And based on the study, we, we know if we have a anti solvent, they can dissolve the solvent without dissolving the salt, then they can remove the, 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 this, uh, the associated energy between solvent and the lithium. Then we can have an opportunity to build low temperature electrolysis. And then we just add more HFV uh, in the, the electrolysis. So this is HFV. So this is uh, the carbonate FEC, FEMC, and they have a lithium. So this is really not dissolved the salt, but dissolved the solvent. They remove the solvent, the, the social energy, energy with the lithium. Then we can bring to the very low temperature. We can go to the minus 80C. And looks like uh, this is uh, we only consider the concentration. How can we increase ion concentration? When we go to the, this extreme, it's hard to go further. Then we rethink, is there any way we change the property of solvent? So even we have ion come to the anode side, and solvent also come to an anode side. But if solvent reduction potential is lower, then at a high potential, only ion has an opportunity to reduce. Then we can further the, the enhance the reduction for ion. The next step is we select the solvent that has a really lower reduction potential. We give one example is THFB. So the reduction potential only at 0.3 and the ECDMC, they are, they are redu reduced at 1.2 or one volt. So this is another strategy. So then we try the THF. We really can bring the efficiency further to 99.8. So from here to here, we significantly increase. But 99.8 is still not enough. We need to go to 99.9. Then we have hope to, to use a little metal. So this is a motivation. So this is not only if this idea is right, this is not only suitable for lithium. This should be suitable for any large volume change electron. And then we also check the silicon. Silicon, same idea. Uh, silicon volume change of 300%. And a lot of people use polymer coating. And the same thing, silicon 300 volume change, silicon if bonded with some polymer SEA, they will crack. And even they have a really high elastic deformation, they still have volume change, you would consider 500 cycle. And they definitely, they have uh, some uh, defect and electrolyte will penetrate and it, the, the efficiency will lower. So that's the reason we think this idea should 
work are also on the silicon. So we're doing the exact same, use the composition, put in the silicon, and we try. And then RTH, if silicon work, it should be universal. All the high capacity, any alloy, they should work. We also validate that. So the idea is the same thing. We should use the, the, the ICI less bound with silicon. And which one? We think the, the best way is the lithium fluoride. Silicon, we recently studied, even you have a lithium deposition, they are still good if you have a lithium fluoride because it can suppress a lithium band drive. So after this, and then we reconsider what, why lithium ion is so successful. The reason is they have SEA and water cannot form SEA because water, they decompose from gas. But in a water-based electrolyte, is, is there any way we also can form solid preservation there? Also lithium fluoride. And then we think maybe solvent we cannot change. Only we change the salt. So the idea is original, this is the window, we say two volt. And salt only reduced at 1.2 volt. But if we add a lot of salt, water bounded by salt, and the reduction potential can decrease, and salt reduction potential can increase. And at a certain amount, maybe same idea, we have a lithium, we have TFSA. Maybe lithium has the opportunity to bring the TFSA to the anode side, TFSA reduce before water reduce, and then they can form SEI, same thing. So we validate, they really has, when you increase the concentration to 21 molar, they have a chance to reduce first before the water reduce. They form a lithium fluoride SEI. So then they extend the window. On the cathode side, same thing, because of water bonded, when you increase the potential, TFSI absorb, ion absorb on the surface. TFSI is hydrophobic. So they block the water away from the cathode side. So water do not have an opportunity to change the, to the oxygen gas. So they increase the, the, the potential also to the 4.9 volt. And then we build three volt aqueous electrolytes. And we demonstrate this concept. And then we also apply to the zinc battery. And recently we developed a cathode suitable for aqueous battery. And just this year in the January, we use this concept and we believe TFSA can absorb on the surface. They can block the water will successfully make air oxygen reduction in two electrons before everybody believe water have to evolve. Since our discovery, we believe water will move away from cathode. So we first report uh, two electrons oxygen reduction oxidation rate. So this year we just published the result. So this looks like we still have a, a lot of things, new things can develop. And then solid state. So the whole idea is we do not want to solve and reduce. We want to solve and reduce. The reason is we want inorganic SEI. But surround the solid state is inorganic. This should be perfect, should be much better than liquid. But we still have a problem right now. Why, based on this theory, solid state should work? The reason is solid state, we, when we talk, we say lithium fluoride is the best idea. But in the solid state, up to now, we do not have any fluorinated solid electrolytes. All solid electrolytes are oxidized and sulfide. Sulfide, we already know is, good, is bad. So if we avoid use this idea, we have to bring fluorine inside. So that's our group. We want to bring some lithium fluoride. But you cannot use artificial. Artificial, when they crack, they cannot save heating. So we have to bring some fluorine inside, form a lithium fluoride, and then they can have opportunity to save heating. 
or we use some other ceramic making the composite and the insurance they have a high increase energy that is our group the motivation also if you have a lithium bright it can block the electronics go through inside the electrolytes and they can avoid lithium dendrite nucleation inside so that is the our the solid state battery group so today i will just take one sample talk about silicon and then slightly use it, this electrolyte to talk about the lithium. And at the last, if I have a time, I just talk maybe two slides on this idea. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the silicon work. We use the THF to demonstrate the, the concept. So this is a two postdoc and this is Armage Lab collaborator. Let me talk about silicon, the challenge. And silicon, traditional, we have a silicon, we have a organic, inorganic ICI. Silicon initiation volume change, crack. When you crack, electrolyte penetrate. Also, silicon themselves also crack. And then we crack, electrolyte come in, and then they, they, they form like the cluster, the, the composite. And this, the reason why the crack, SEI crack because it's so strongly bonded with silicon. No any material, SEI material can withstand 300% volume change. Then the idea is maybe we go to the nano size. And okay, so go to the nano size, they have a challenge. And so when we form this kind of micro size, and then you see that this is a normally structure, they have a lot of SEI inside. And they have a crack silicon. So when they go to the nano size, uh, volume change is small, and the crack is small, but they have a challenge. The first few cycle couldn't be efficiency very low. Also, they have an additional problem is the cutting the life. So our idea is we want to reverse way, and this is a silicon. We want to form a little fluoride on the surface. And polymer only on the outside, if you have, it's not necessary. And in that case, the bonding is so weak. And even this volume change, the SCI not go with the silicon. So the SCI will not volume change because the bonding is so weak. So then we have an opportunity just like cover shell structure. So when silicon volume shrink, they just shrink because the bonding is so weak, the SEI will not shrink with the silicon. So the SEI will be stable. And this is the structure. Traditionally, we only can observe this kind of structure. But after we add a new electrolytes, we see it's really thin layer. Inside, you see the silicon volume change, and they flow like a fiber. And then we will show you why this happened. So this is a general idea. We think of lithium fluoride as a enable silicon achieve long cycle life. And then the design. So first we need to make sure lithium fluoride really has a high interface energy with silicon and the silicon. So we do a lot of calculation at a different lithium stage. What is the interface energy? This interface energy with silicon with the lithium fluoride is really high. Second, how can we form a lithium fluoride? And as we mentioned, first of the concentration for ion. Second is the potential. We need to do the both, and then we can achieve highest lithium fluoride. This is the, we compare the THF and the traditional electrolysis. What is the concentration, ion concentration difference? So first we check SSIP. SSIP, this is traditional electrolyte, usually the black. Large amount of SSIP, meaning it's lithium surrounded by solvent, not ion. But in our electrolytes, the SSIP is very small. CIP, the blue one. Blue one in traditional very small, but in 
catch up really a large amount. It means one li little more to bring a lot of ion uh, with Cap6 with a little. AGG, right over ours, we have a lot here, only 2%. In addition to the concentration with the potential, EC, DMC, and lithium PF6, you see the ion and solvent reduction potential same, meaning when potential decrease, and here both solvent and the ion reduce. But in the THF, we use the THF, THF only reduce at 0 0.3. One potential gradual decrease, and here above 0.3, only ion reduce, and THF will not reduce. So that case will conform with lithium fluoride. So concentration high, potential difference large. Based on both, we can form really pure lithium fluoride. So that is a theoretical type uh, estimation. How it is important for the silicon? And how can we realize this? So this is a chart is hard curve for silicon if it's amorphous. This actually we got, we got from the paper, other people's guys' paper. So this is a chart, this chart, this chart, chart curve, and seems to be, this is a thin film, and they also measure the stress, because when the, the lithium insert into the silicon, the stress volume change, they have a stress. But uh, surprisingly, they find out when lithium insert into a certain level, the stress increase and then decrease. Why the decrease? The reason is when lithium is alloyed with silicon to the certain value and they become plastic. And so you see the volume, suppose you, you insert more lithium there, stress should be continued increase, but it's not increase, decrease. So they have a plastic deformation, even they have a continued insert in the lithium. So that means this similar as lithium metal, they are plastic. So that means they can flow inside of the particle if the electrolyte is not penetrated. Traditional, why did this not happen? Because when they crack, the electrolyte penetrate inside, they cannot flow. But in our case, if we have a shell, completely avoid the electrolyte penetration, we will see this. And then we see what happened. We have a little PF6 reduction potential 1.2 volt and THF and here 0.3. When we have a potential decrease, silicon, open circuit gradual decrease below 1.2 volt, PF6 reduce. So they form a little fry. And because this situation is very small, no volume change, or volume change very small, and they continue to grow the lithium fluoride at here. When you continue lithium to the this value, the stress increase, and then they crack. Crack for micro-sized silicon. You do not have, uh, you cannot block it because of volume change, they have a stress. When they crack, but unfortunately, at this potential, the, the solvent has not started reduced yet, only the PF6 reduce. So they just hold the form little fry, the bond, the bonding so weak, and even the crack and the the the, the SES still stable. If you have a polymer right now, and then they will break. And so in that case, even the crack, they still hold it. After that, because it's the volume change, they have a plastic deformation, and then they can flow. When they flow, they healed. The reason is electrolytic cannot penetrate inside. As they are stable, so they healed, they, they refilled the hole. And then they continue to the lithiation only after they reach to the almost zero voltage. Suppose it should be 0 0.3, but because we have a lithium fry, they block electronics. They have all potential, even at 0 0.3, the HF will not reduce. Only, only after fully dissociation and THF reduce from a polymer. And then if they go back the dissociation, they will shrink 
because the bonding is so weak. So this lithium fluoride will not deform. So they are stable. And then further reduce the, least, the amount of lithium and then they shrink again and then they cycle. So this is the motivation we believe. They will solve the, the silicon volume change problem, even micro size. Because micro size before nobody believed it's possible. And how can you validate? This is just we guess design. And then we check. This is a silicon. Silicon, when we after many cycles, dissociation, depreciation, and then we use the beam to check. We find out that lithium fluoride is really not stable. When we have a beam time to, 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 to check, we find out at the beginning, if we quickly take picture, you see they have a layer. But if we take a little longer time, the layer disappears. You see this one is like a fiber. So that meaning they really flow as during the plastic deformation. And then detail, we want to see just one place, long, long time, see the evolution of the surface. At the beginning, you see a layer, not clear, long time. A little exposure to the beam time, longer, longer, and longer. It's really clear. Something lithium fluoride, use a beam, the damage, damage, and then they see the clear structure. You said this is really like we talk. They flow inside and in the in the hole, no liquid electrolyte. Normally you see any silicon, if you use traditional electrolyte, you see everywhere SCA. The hole is SCA. Right now it's clean because the layer is really stable. And then we need a, not only from SCM, we need to use the, the the composition identify that is really lithium fluoride, not something else. So this is a, after many cycles, you see the silicon just like fiber. And we'll take one silicon and check the yields. And yields is special yields. We use a plasma uh, enhance the because that case that we can reduce the sensitivity of a lithium fluoride to the beam. So this is the particle. And this is a way check the, the composition and the, the yields at a different thickness. And you will see at a, this is one, two, three, four, five. This is a different thickness. Surface, just like a polymer. And the second layer, you see lithium fluoride. And inside, lithium silicon. We also mapping. This is a lithium fluoride mapping. That means it's really covered on the surface. And for the traditional electrolytes, you see the peak is exactly the same. And the lithium fluoride on the surface of silicon surface, the uniform. This is exactly everybody believed organic, inorganic, uniform coated on the surface of a traditional electrolytes, the, 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 the silicon. So this is the second evidence we show really have a lithium fluoride. As yet on the surface. And then we build a, a cell and then we check the performance. So this is a, just a silicon. We just buy from a Sigma outreach without any treatment. You see, not uniform micro size and 10 micro and a meter. And without radiation, nothing there. We just put the carbon black, put the binder, and charge the charge. So this is a different cycles from one to 20. They are repeatable. Only first cycle because they are crystal. After that, it become amorphous. Traditional electrolytes, you know, is quickly decayed after many cycles. And we check the read because everybody think lithium fluoride is ionic insulator almost. Ionic conductivity is so low, or maybe you have a read problem. But we check read really fast. But why they are the lithium fluoride are in the conductivity so lower? They still have a very fast read. The reason is they are really thin. And for the SCA, I gave a new definition. So the SCA, you are not evaluated by conductivity. You should evaluate by the ASR, area specific resistance. Meaning you need to use 
If the ratio is high, they are good because <coughs> the electronic conductivity lower, they were very thin. Total resistance is very small. So we clear total resistance. We are not clear about the conductivity. So this is the evidence <coughs> we show um, the ratio is more important rather than connectivity. So we can go to the 5C. So fast 5C, you see the capacity, 5C, huge amount the uh, current. Cycle life, THF. This is cycle 200, traditional electrolysis. And quickly decayed. This is the efficiency. We are 99.9, 39. Traditional electrolysis is only 99, 95, or even 91. <clears throat> so this is, we think, if this whole principle is right, this should be unif uh, universal. And then we check alumina. Alumina just applied 20 micro without any treatment. And we charge the charge and uh, different rate. You see here, 80 C. It's really large amount. The reason is the electronic conductor better than CDP. So we can go to 80 C, they still get a very high capacity. Cycle life. And we can go to the more than 250 cycles. Micro size alumina, nobody can, can get this kind of performance. So this is a way so that three non efficiency. First, the cycle efficiency 91, similar as graphite, because the first efficiency is really linked to particle size. Also, bismuth, particle size even 30, is much larger than alumina. This is a building charge discharge, <clears throat> the phase change. This is a charge discharge at different rate, the curve. And this is read capacity and cycle life. So this is a also 250 cycle. This is universal. It's not just by lucky, by chance. So we hold the principle for high capacity electrode. This may be a one solution. So recently we applied this knowledge to the cathode. The MC811, they report a crack. Nobody can solve the problem. We believe this is also supplied, applied. Use this principle, even the crack, the electrolyte cannot penetrate, that's still okay. So now our, we ask the student to focus on the cattle. Use the exact same principle. We hope we can solve the problem is any electrodes if they crack. In the future, energy density really depend on the voltage and depend on capacity. Intrinsically, if we increase the capacity, volume change big. Volume change big, it will crack. So you have to solve this problem. Otherwise, you cannot develop a next generation the benefit. So that we talk about with the electrolysis has a broad space and can bring the new the, the idea to uh, support next generation benefit. And then full cell. And we use lithium fluoride, uh, the uh, FFP, lithium ion phosphate. The reason why we use this because THF is the electrochemical stability window is a matter. And we use this as just demonstrate. Doesn't mean is we have to use a THF. To demonstrate, we use the lithium ion phosphate. And we match with the silicon anode, bismuth, alumina, recycled. For example, we take a silicon, if we use a traditional electrolysis, the quick decay. This is a full cell without any treatment, no pre-decision. Just to put the cell, treat them as a graphite. So we can get a very stable cell. And not only silicon and bismuth, alumina, the same. So this is a validated in a full cell also. But uh, the lithium ion phosphate really have a lower energy density. We have to use a nickel MC or NC 
and then we check the SA. We go to 4.1 volt, they, they can cycle. But uh, the capacity is not high. We need to go to 4.2 volt, but our electric lattice cannot withstand 4.2. So we just got a DOE grant. I try to sell my idea. So this is maybe has a future for next generation, the high capacity anode. So they, they support us a silicon grant. And then just uh, one month ago, we developed generation two electrolytes. This is uh, for the silicon capacity, air capacity, really stable. And also this electrolyte can go with NCA, MC, even 811. So right now we use this generation two electrolytes from silicon MC811. So this tell us we really can build a next generation battery your silicon MC and achieve both high capacity, also even can go to the further high voltage. So this is what we talk about the silicon, and then we think maybe we want to demonstrate also little metal, little more metal, more challenge than silicon. So we also use that same uh, the the electrolysis. We just check the the lithium. Lithium metal normally in in our design is we have a salt and the salt with a reduction potential different. So we need to change the potential gradually from high open circuit to the zero voltage. So then we consider is lithium free anode. And then to uniform the form the nucleation of lithium, we put a lithium phyllic substrate. We use graphite bismuth composite because they are can dissociation and can uniform on the surface. So we believe the substrate should be lithium phyllic and form the SEI should be lithium phobic. So the idea is if we have a graphite or bismuth, if only bismuth, this is red light, this is a potential. And they will hold at 0.7 volt for a long time. Why we do this? We want this because we already saw this. At the 0.7, only salt ion reduce, solvent is not reduced. So we can form lithium fluoride. So that's the reason, but uh, this is uh, the, the business. We do not want them have a large amount. So we just mix with graphite. Green is graphite and make the composite. They still can hold at the 0.6 for a certain time, enough to form lithium fluoride. And then they can start the, the lithium plating. So then the idea is gradually, if we go to the, the blue one, hold here, they form lithium fluoride, no problem because at uh, this potential polymer not reduced yet. After enough, they come here and then lithium plating on the surface between the lithium phyllic, graphite and the lithium phobic, lithium fluoride in the middle. And when lithium depleting and the SCI just move up and because lithium cannot penetrate, the interface energy is so high if they penetrate, they have a green additional energy penalty and the lithium easily diffuse along the surface. That is our motivation. So this is our design, mimic silicon. And then we check. So this is a use of our THF. So you see this is really smooth. We believe that they have a lithium fraud on the surface. Traditional electrolytes, band drive. And you see a lot of the, the lithium goes through, mix with the SEI. So this is a one meter an hour per centimeter square. What happened if we go to two or three, they're still smooth because we got a really pure lithium fluoride on the surface. We summarize, and if we use this 0.5 current, one meter an hour per centimeter square capacity, we got a 99.8. This is a recorded efficiency. And nobody reported such a high efficiency. Even we go to a higher current, the same capacity, we can even get it also get 99.5. So our goal is 
change this as nine. And then we have a hope to use the leaking metal. Cycle, this is the traditional electrolysis is of the THF. And efficiency, we say this is the number at a different uh, capacity. So we can keep 200 cycle really stable efficiency. This is a plating stripping curve, red one, traditional electrolysis, and this is a THF. And then lithium free. So the goal is we not use a lithium metal, and we just all the lithium come from cattle. So this is we use the lithium ion, the iron phosphate. And this is the, the, the substrate we, for the lithium plating. So this is the, the, our the THF lithium free cell. If you use a traditional electrolyte, they only can cycle 20 cycles. And also the efficiency is really high. And recently we just mentioned that we developed a new electrolyte. We can go to NMC811, uh, the 622 copper, and the lithium free. So we can go to the 140 cycles, really stable. Lithium free, that is really challenging. And I will take maybe five minutes, just roughly further thinking of solid state. If this idea is, looks like really promising, how can we apply this idea to the solid state? Solid state, we know they have a cathode surface problem, interface problem. But today I'll talk about is dendrite. How can we use our design and also apply it to the solid state? Prevent the lithium dendrite. So before we, we, we believe if we have a lithium, we want the SEI layer should be lithium fluoride. But for the liquid, the volume change is easy because they are liquid electrolytes. When you have a lithium plating and the layer just go, solid state, no, you do not have a space because they are raw, <coughs> it's solid, rigid. So they are a, lot, a little bit different. Then our idea is. Can we form a lithium fluoride first? And the lithium can, when they plating, lithium just go into the pore. And because the liquid electron can move, but some state you cannot move only with lithium penetrate inside. Also, lithium fluoride in a liquid electron, the form is very, very thin. But in solid state, we do not have a mechanism of in situ form lithium fluoride. We have to Bring artificial, artificial really thick. When you have very thick lithium fluoride, it is very hard. And then we think, is there any way we can reduce the, the increased ionic conductivity? And then we use lithium nitrate. So we mix lithium fluoride, lithium nitrate, just a compressed particle, ball milling and compressed on the lithium surface. So they have a lot of pool there, they can go inside. <clears throat> This design is different from a lot of people believe. A lot of people believe the lithium contact, the electrolyte should be uniform, balanced, high density. So I believe if my design is right, we believe this should be porous, allow lithium go inside, but they cannot penetrate into the dendrite. The reason is, they are lithium phobic. And lithium phobic means the lithium cannot penetrate. Just like a PTFE, if you have a water on the top, even you have a micro uh, crack, water cannot penetrate. The reason is they are the hydrophobic. So this is the same thing we design. We build the SEI, lithium nitrate and the lithium fluoride mixture, porous but highly lithium uh, phobic. So this is, we, we use this idea, we demonstrate, we can lithium plating stripping at a very high current, they are stable. And efficiency, we can reach 99, solid state, a huge challenge to reach this number. And we increase the current, you see the potential not change. Suppose you increase the current, the potential should be increased. Why they are not increased? Because they penetrate inside. You increase the current, meaning you plating more lithium, you hold it at the same size, only 
lithium can go is go inside. When you go inside, it increases contact surface. So resistance is smaller, and then the over potential not increase. This is the evidence. You see this one, nothing. We just press. They have a lot of a hole there. And then lithium just go inside. And then we check the thickness. Lithium really penetrated six micron. And the contact, if we have a lithium nitrate, lithium fraud layer, and then we protect the LPS, LPS is stable. Lithium only goes through this layer and reversible. So then we bring the full cell cycle really stable. So the general idea we talk about here is we should design the electrolytes, make them more tolerant, robust, rather than say make them uniform, defect less, or perfect because you never reach that goal. You need to make think yourself, make them more robust, more resistance. And so then you can in, make this battery can tolerate high current. And so you can use high capacity and also high energy density. I think this is my last slide. And so I think we are a little bit longer. So if you have uh, questions and I can answer. Thank you everybody. Thank you, Dr. Wong, for presenting. Um, we really appreciate you coming and giving this amazing talk. Does anyone have any questions at the moment?